Right off the bat, I can name six names. It connects pedophilia to one of the major studios. The way that he would threaten me was like, you know, if you tell your parents what's going on, you tell your mom, you're not gonna be able to act anymore. Many of the adults in there know each other and are exchanging information about certain kids. It's frightening. You gotta realize how many studios may have protected people that they knew they were doing wrong. They don't want to get rid of people because they're, they're making money for them. In the city where dreams are made, we now know fame can come at a price. Power and money can buy silence. Even a conviction for child abuse doesn't necessarily preclude you from the party. I've heard many stories of kids going to an agent, an agent who can control their career and put them into auditions. Um, and so the agent's spending time alone with the child. They're able to sort of, unfortunately, get them away from parental supervision. Uh, and then they take advantage of these kids. Um, and it's more common, I think, than, than, than we can even imagine. If you'd asked me when I was five years old what I wanted to be when I grew up, it was, I wanted to be famous. Nathan Winters was 11 when he starred in his first film. Some of the cast and crew came to my mom and said, you know, Nathan and Victor's interaction on set is not okay. There is something going on. Director Victor Salva had been a friend of Nathan's mum since Nathan was six. She made props for his movies. The clowns, the clowns, Randy, they're here. Clown House, financed by Francis Ford Coppola, was his first feature film. And behind the scenes, something awful was happening. His grooming process was developing my love and trust and developing my parents' trust. And so essentially he became a close friend of the family and it turned in from like, you know, well, how about I take Nathan for a few hours tonight, you know, give you guys a break. And then that eventually within a year turned into full weekends. The first time that I remember there being any kind of touching or abuse, I was staying the night at his house, his apartment, and we were watching movies, and one of the movies he put on to watch was Jungle Book, and started talking about Mowgli's loincloth, and um, so that he could make me one. So he got two bandanas and tied them together and made this loincloth, and as he's tying them, he's like fondling me, and, um, and that's like my first memory of when the abuse started, and you know, eventually it progressed over the next five years. Videotape all of it, I mean, it was, it was full blown. When they found out, Nathan's family went to the police and Salva was eventually sent to prison. He had a, a nice, expensive lawyer team. There was people watching us. And, and again, I think that there was no intent other than to make it aware that we were being watched and to intimidate us and hopefully scare us off. As a convicted paedophile, Victor Salva is on the sex offenders register, but it hasn't stopped him having a successful career in movies. The neighbors talk about him like he's some kind of a phantom. Powder, one of the scripts he wrote in prison, was distributed by Disney's Buena Vista Pictures. What's your name? Powder. He's also made the Jeepers Creepers franchise. What happened here happened before. I was told at 12 that I'd never work in that industry again basically blackballed for telling the truth. He's been coddled completely by um, certain members of Hollywood and, and big names in Hollywood have been backing him and throughout the entire process. It just seems like there's like an exclusive club and Victor's a part of that club. People throw money at the problem. Whether it's paying the person off or hiring a team of lawyers, powerful people use money as a shield. This is why a lot of these people just were silent. It's a very hard and powerful thing to, to fight. Child abuse experts say they treat two to 300 cases of sexual abuse in Los Angeles every year. As part of a two month operation targeting child predators in Southern California, LA police made 238 arrests in 2016. It takes that inner strength to come forward now with children it's uh, that inner strength that, you know, it, it, it's not the same as, as with, with, with an adult. They feel like they've done something wrong. 
and they feel guilty. And it's very difficult to come and talk about it because you're not even sure you're a victim. Hollywood might not like talking about it, but it doesn't take a lot of digging to find even more examples of how it often has selective amnesia when it comes to some of the past behaviour of those it chooses to welcome into the fold. If we look historically at what's been going on, I mean, we, how long ago was it that Mel Gibson was completely derided in this town and is now being lauded for his work? And we've seen it, you know, we've seen these scandals for Roman Polanski and for Woody Allen. We've seen these scandals become very public. And then a few years passes and they're being given money for more projects. The Harvey Weinstein scandal shows how the industry can turn a blind eye, exposing how those close to him appear to have been complicit in protecting the producer. Keeping quiet about accusations of sexual assault and rape, which Weinstein denies. There's been a domino effect of people coming forward with allegations of misconduct. Others who have been accused include Tyler Grasham, an agent for one of the stars of Stranger Things, who was fired following claims he raped an 18-year-old. And with allegations mounting, Kevin Spacey has apologised to actor Anthony Rapp for sexual harassment when he was 14. And it's prompted questions over why Roman Polanski continues to be decorated with industry awards despite a conviction for raping a 13-year-old. Power that comes with fame seems to make some untouchable. I think fame ultimately corrupts. You know, I think a lot of famous people will say that uh, they don't change when they become famous, but people change towards them when they're famous. And the, the famous people that I've known, I've hung up with, they live in a very weird world where everything they say is hilarious, people are running around after them all the time. It's, it's naturally and ultimately corrupting in some way. You're not seeing the world in a normal way, so your whole level of what is right and wrong ultimately adjusts. In 2004, actor Brian Peck was convicted of sex with a child. But just two years later, he was given a role on this kid's show, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Do you like the design? Three words. Kid, date, us. Let's take a short break. He's since been working as a dialogue coach on anger management. Speaking to someone familiar with the show, we were told the decision to hire Brian Peck came down to Charlie Sheen himself. An investigation was actually carried out after a complaint was made by one of the crew who learned about his background. The recommendations were, though, because some time had passed, he was going to be allowed to stay on set providing no children were present, and his time off set would be limited to Charlie Sheen's trailer. I mean, you got to realize how many studios may have protected people that they knew what, was going, what they were doing wrong, you know, that knew it and should have got rid of them a long time ago. And, you know, so these are corporate situations that they don't want to get rid of people because they're, they're making money for them, so they don't want to get rid of them, so they keep them even though they're victimizing people. Todd Bridges, who starred in one of the 70s biggest sitcoms, was molested by his publicist. At the time that it was going on, from 11 to 12, I didn't know what I was. You know, because, you know, you're a little kid, you don't have any idea what you are. I had never had sexual encounters or anything, so when that man did that to me, you know, he grew me, grew me very well. Secrets is what kills. Secrets will kill you. You can't hold secrets inside you. That's what destroys you. I'm one of the few children, you know, that have, you know, got rid of it and still around. Most of my protégés have died or they committed suicide or OD'd you know, because they couldn't get over it and stuff that happened to them. Corey Feldman and Corey Haim, two of the biggest child stars of the 80s, both said they were abused by paedophiles during that time. Before his death, Haim claimed he'd been raped aged 11. On social media, Feldman now says it's high time those who knew speak up. I know that there's thousands of others that have experienced what I've experienced in the entertainment industry. I also know that there's peers of mine who know exactly what I'm talking about and know all the details but have been afraid to come forward with their own truths. I am using this to draw a line in the sand, to say to the Hollywood community, we are better than this. But will what's happening in Hollywood now be enough of a catalyst to finally force the film industry to oust its abusers? Personally, I'd like to see responsibility with anyone working with children or, or a child with an extensive background checked. 
um, it goes back to where the industry or where the company draws the line. Powerful people have a responsibility for the people they employ. I think it's uh, they should have systems in place to, to protect the people that are working for them. That's responsible management. Whether you're a woman or a male or a child or an adult, if you're being abused, you're being abused and we should, as victims and survivors, should all band together and stick together and, and really there's strength in numbers, you know, so I'm really hoping that, that through this exposure um, more people will come forward. We just have to look at what's going on with, with young women. We know they're not being protected, so what makes us think that anyone else is being protected? Uh, this, is, this is opening up, I think, a big can of worms for Hollywood. I think there are a lot of people who probably have not said their experiences. And, but eventually, I think they will. Once they feel safe enough and they realize that nothing's going to happen to them. The script has been ripped up. Now the focus is on Hollywood itself. Before it can tell other people's stories, it's now under increasing pressure to act on its own dark reality.